Let's get started with how did the three of you meet? Well, like all great women, when they meet other great women, all they can think about is, wow, I really need to connect them. They would be amazing. They're influencers. They're women that really make change and a difference. I, Stacy, when I met Sweet Debbie, said, oh my gosh, I love her. She's amazing. She's a doer. I, I, I'm ecstatic to do something with her. And then when we got to talking, my sweet husband said, you know, you girls have got a great plan and it's all here and now it's on paper. You really need to take it to someone else. So Debbie, I'll let you take it from there. <laughs> so Stacy and I spent a lot of time going through and we, we came up with the name Women's Leadership Live because she has two daughters. I have a daughter and five granddaughters. Obviously, it's about empowering women. We want to make a difference for young women. So Stacy says, okay, great. I've got this friend that I know. Let's go take our business plan to her. Let's see what she thinks. She's got a huge pedigree of success behind her. Let's go to see her. I said, great. Who is it? And she says, Linda McMahon. I said, the Linda McMahon? <laughs> and she said, yes. I said, oh, goodness. You're, you're intimidated. I'm going to be up front, right? <laughs> Stacy makes the appointment. We go up to see her. She's gracious enough to give us her time. So we go in to see Linda McMahon. I'm going to turn it to Linda. <laughs> so here I am innocently expecting that, you know, Stacy's going to come in. She tells me that she's bringing this wonderful woman with her and they have a plan for business. They just like to get me to kind of eyeball it and see if I thought they were on the right track or whatever. So this dynamic duo came in to, you know, Actually, I think they body slammed me the first time they came in. <laughs> they but, want you to feel at home, right? But, but, but honestly, um, they did have a great plan. And uh, I looked at it a little skeptically at first in terms of the need. Not that it wasn't a great business plan, but just in terms of the need and what the market was, you know, et cetera. And the more we talked, I said, you know, not only do I think this is great, but I want in. Mm -hmm. So more than just kind of advising, I, uh, they allowed me to opt in. And I joined the company and it was great. You guys have said that you felt the need for women was to have people to connect with because women sometimes have a confidence problem. And when they have people around them like them, they can excel in that area. What advice do you wish someone would have shared with you years ago? Because you didn't have this years mm. ago when you were starting out. Yeah, it was a real challenge um, having access to women that had been there, done that. I think as business owners, our dream was to network with influential leaders, corporate executives, investors, advisors, but you're so busy running the day-to-day, -day, you can't get out of your own way to even know how to meet or network with those people. So with Women's Leadership Live, we wanted to bring a platform together with live conferences that has also an extension of a mentoring program where women would not just be one and done at our event, they would continue to have mentors in their life and take them through what it takes to take a product to market or move up in a corporate ladder and break that glass ceiling or maybe work at a nonprofit and know what it feels like to actually go out and learn how to ask people for money. We as women, it's the most difficult thing. Back to what you were saying, confidence. 67% of women say, I don't have the confidence to even to ask for myself anything. How are they going to ask for something else for themselves, their community, or their career. In the beginning of my career, my first career was in education, were men. All my mentors were men, which was awesome, and they're incredible individuals, and they've taught me so much, but I would have loved to have had a woman, but I was the only female principal on the high school level, so there were no women. So we need to create opportunities for women to come together to meet other successful women, because they know we're all unique, and women have unique struggles. We try to balance and juggle and maintain everything, and, and so as a woman, we understand that. So having other women, and that was what was important to us to, at our conference, to have women who are very successful. They've had trials and tribulations, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and they're willing to share it. So getting advice from women, because we have unique situations. Studies have been done and stats are available to show that women who are mentored or who have a community of support around them are much more likely to get salary increases, are much more likely to go in and ask for that promotion. So part of what we would like to be able to do is to you know, provide women and a little bit of that empowerment. And knowing what to do helps so much. And this kind of goes back to what Stacy had said, is sometimes we feel afraid to ask. Absolutely, because most women, they do still face tremendous barriers. When it comes to having full expression of their talents and their leadership abilities, it causes them to sometimes even prematurely leave a corporation because they didn't have what it took to go in and say, hey, I really want that next position. So instead, fear holds them back and they don't do anything. Thing. So on a corporate level, what does that mean? We have some great corporate sponsors involved with Women's Leadership Live, and they said if we could increase our retention with greater productivity and higher job satisfaction for women, 
all in all, we'd have a, a strong community and people that are loyal to the company. You know, I think we've lost a lot of that. People check in at nine, they leave at five. It's a different work ethic than ever before. Our organization really wants to help women become role models, ambassadors, and leaders in their own companies. Talking about men here and there, mm -hmm. men are welcome at this event. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have, I think, it's three men registered to come, so mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see what their interest is. Are they coming out of curiosity? We hope that they will come and take away with them some ideas and skills really about how to mentor women to help them grow if they're in a position to do that within their organization. But we also believe it's not just women who learn better negotiating skills, how to speak up for yourself, how to not hold back you know, in, especially in the corporate environment as a CEO at WWE. And I interviewed women mostly at higher level positions by the time I was doing that kind of interviewing. And it could be the very same job, two incredibly qualified people, one male and one female. And the man would come in and just absolutely be more confident. This is what I can do. I'm ready to start tomorrow. I've already got things in my mind already laid out. The woman tentatively would come in and say, you know, I really do think I could do a good job. But here are a couple of things I'd like for you to tell me first to make sure sure that I have all of the right qualifications I need. If I don't, I want to brush up on them so I can come in stronger for you. Well, the man's already got the job by the time the two of them leave the office. Most of the time, unless you really, really know those individuals, you know, very, very well and can select which one would bring the greatest skills to the table. And quite often, it is the woman who can really come in and get that job done better. It's all a matter of presentation in that interview. It is. Yeah. And confidence. So I think if there are more of a community for women, we can help train them. These are the confidence points. Don't undersell yourself. Really know your strength. It's mm -hmm. very important. Now, speaking of this event, it covers a wide spectrum from corporates to nonprofits, the whole shebang. Entrepreneurial. Entrepreneurs, business owners. We even have an opportunity for women who are entrepreneurs and have a product that's retail ready to pitch, if you want to say, their product to a substantial group of shopping channel executives that will choose a product to go on our HSN show called American Dreams. So we're looking to help to put women and their businesses up on the platform of Shopping Channel. What's that look like? Well, I've been in it for 20 years. We have a 300 million eyeball reach from all the networks that we're on. And it's a great way for women just to say, I'm passionate about a product. I do things with a purpose. I want to make people's lives easier with my product and get it to market. And I think just being able to say, yeah, we have almost the shark tank, but we want to call it the dolphin tank <laughs> because we're a little that. bit friendlier. <laughs> <laughs> I love them in every way on Shark Tank, but we just want to do it in an uplifting and inspirational way where women come away and say, oh my God, I got so much from that. And I realize, yeah, I am ready to take my business to the next level. And who knows, we may find another Stacey Shefflin in this Oh room. God, <laughs> please. There'll be so many more women, so much more to offer. It's a blessing. It's Wait, a blessing. And how many countries are you in we're, selling on your, we're, your home shopping we're networks We're in 25 around the world? countries around the world and four continents and um, seven networks. Oh. So it is a blessing. It's live. It's in real time. You can really measure success when you do that. And people say, how do you measure success by being on television. I said, it's never been about, for me, noses or nickels. That's customers or cash. It's always been about the relationship, an authentic and positive influence that you can touch people through television. You know immediately if your product's making it or not making it. And it's a way for her to tell you as a consumer, you've really reached me. So it's in a real engagement, which we have, we are bringing right into Women's Leadership Live. Connect, and engage. And De there's no one better about connecting and engaging than Debbie Saviano. Too kind, Stacy. But we do. We have physical space and we have virtual space. And we're today, you know, you take the radio. We used to radio was just local because of where your satellites or your towers, whatever. But now you can live stream. You can go anywhere. You have an internet connection. You can listen on the radio. So we have a whole new opportunity to expand our reach. And we want women to know how to do that because we're all our own brand. Whether you're looking for the position at the office for a raise, a promotion, you're a brand. How you negotiate what are your qualifi qualifications and skills and expertise? But also as entrepreneurs, what do you do? Community service, what do you do? So using the social media aspect of it to really grow and increase your reach. She finds a way, like a real strategist, she finds a way to connect people, brands, products, interest from anything. She can see anything and have a visual and know a gut that that means that what she's going to post means something to somebody. And funny enough, every time she posts, it gets retweeted, mm -hmm. liked, people are sharing. 
thing, and that's what it's all about today. People just want information. Exactly. And, and we and want that's to access. share. Powerful. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Prepare to share powerful. Absolutely. Now, this event is in the Metroplex. I know in radio, we're the fifth largest market. It's a huge area for corporate headquarters. And so women from all these different places are coming in. So not only can the women attending hear from you guys and learn from you, but they can also network and hear from women that they may live next door to. Right. Right. And never had access to. Exactly. That's the most important thing. It, the reason we did pick Texas is because mm -hmm. we sat down and we looked at the 10 top cities in America where corporate women and, and entrepreneurs reside. And this Dallas metro area is huge for that. Debbie says, Irving, Las Colinas, so much is going on there. We really have to get there. So, so Debbie, you want to tell well, why we, we picked Irving and Las Colinas? I think it was great. We have the connection there with Beth Bowman, uh, Greater Irving Chamber of Commerce President and CEO. And, you know, they're masterful at recruiting companies to come in, Fortune 500s. The businesses there are huge. And so our relationship with her and chambers, just like you're talking about radio, chambers have to do things differently than the traditional chamber because they struggle to have membership, if you will. But because Irving is so creative and innovative, they have a huge membership. They have a very active economic development policy of getting companies to come and so Irving was perfect for us and they have opened their arms they want to be a part of it they're uh sponsoring with us to have an opportunity to meet those people in the workforce there and to hear what their challenges are and what their needs are and then of course our goal sponsor Bell Helicopter is huge we've been out there we took a helicopter ride the other day that's uh, incredible got to talk to the women who work there and that's a predominantly male environment but they want to increase the engineers they have with women so we're all trying to do the same thing how can we elevate women how can we promote women how can we give them the confidence as Linda was talking about to know they can do it because they can mm -hmm. we can do anything we want to do right yeah. We got five women in this room. We can do anything we want to do. Exactly. Take yeah. over the world. Hard work, perseverance. I That's mean, right. You can, Absolutely. you can do anything. Now, something I really like about this event, there's only 200 spaces available, which means if you go to this event, you're going to be up close and personal with all of you guys. You're not going to be in the back of a stadium with a big screen and just watching from there. You can really be involved. And I'm sure you guys did that by design. It was our goal to make it more intimate. And I think one of the real emphasis that we're having through this is absolutely Absolutely connectivity mm -hmm. and access access to the people around the stage and we have a lot of experts who are coming to sit on different panels or corporate panel an entrepreneurial panel community panel we want the people who are in that room to have direct access for them mm -hmm. and to be able to continue on with the connections that they make after our event can we share, <laughs> Let's share. Let's share. you're gonna hear first okay Yay. so we're gonna have an event on Friday night it's called Q&A where you just get to sit down with experts and just ask them anything and everything you ever wanted an answer to. Now, where can you go? And it's not going to be in a big ballroom. It's going to be very like salon lounge type setting where we can just all sit, relax, all the titles come off. You've never been to a conference where you can really sit down and say, I can ask you anything I ever wanted to know. From Linda being a CEO of a company, people just to get in her office just to say, hey, I always wanted this dream. Could I ever do this in corporate America? Or from Debbie, I want to have influence online, but I don't really know how to connect with people. And I'm afraid to start getting social online. Or if I've got a product, I really don't know. How do I find resources? I need a manufacturer. Well, how do I get a product to market? All those things are going to be there, and we're going to answer every question. And also, we're not doing traditional keynotes. So it's not like traditional where you go and someone stands at the podium mm. and they give out information. We should talk about our opening. Oh, my gosh, Linda. We should talk about that because yes. the format of that is unique as well. It's an opening keynote panel, if you will. Two panelists, uh, one of whom I know very well. Uh, <laughs> Stephanie McMahon, <laughs> who is the Chief Branding Officer for World Wrestling Entertainment, and um, Charlotte Jones Anderson, of course, well known in the uh, the Dallas area, mm -hmm. who is the EVP Chief Brand Officer for the Dallas Cowboys. Both of these dynamic women are going to talk about what their role is. How is it operating really in a man's world? Because clearly they are very heavily in a male-dominated environment. Mm -hmm. What it's like to work under two iconic fathers. Uh, some of the challenges of that. And I just think they are going to be dynamic. I know them both well, and I think what they bring to the table to talk to the women in the audience about will be um, probably very eye-opening for a lot of their comments they have to make. So I'm excited about having the privilege to be the moderator of that panel. I think they're just going to be incredibly dynamic. What is your daughter? What have you heard her say about you, about your influence? Did she decide to go into the family business more from what she learned from you or from her father or a mixture of both? I think that Stephanie, from the very beginning when I could ever hear her talk about wanting to do something in her life.
truth. It was to be part of world wrestling entertainment. I suspect that certainly came more from her father and the entertaining and the performing aspect of it because she really, really loves to perform. But she's also an incredibly smart young woman. But Steph has said, you know, that on the on the corporate side, the business side, you know, she heard me talk about that more. You know, things like the board of directors meetings and those sorts of things that she, you know, she really was listening very intently. But I have to tell you, it's a funny story. What we required our children to do if they wanted to work in the company was to keep my schedule for six weeks and keep Vince's schedule for six weeks. They had to be in every meeting we were in. They had to go everywhere we wanted to go. I'd catch her dozing off in a couple of my <laughs> meetings. She never dozed <laughs> off in the meetings with her dad. But uh, so there's a little background. <laughs> What's cool about this event is this is a chance for them to learn from one another, mm-hmm. which I think is nice. Absolutely. And I think a thing about that, we've talked about this so much, the three of us, there is no competition really, because what happens is everyone has a unique story. So I always tell people, you could have five social media people in a room and four may not be your person. The one might be, I might not be it. It might be someone else, but I'm there for somebody else. So I think we're trying to show women again, that confidence level, because it's something we all struggle with in the mm-hmm. quiet of the night. Am I as good as her? Mm-hmm. Am I doing as well as she is? It's just, it's what we're kind of in our DNA, if we like to say, but we want to change that. We want women to say, by golly, I can do it. And this is how I can do it. And these are my unique gifts and my talents. What have I got that makes me unique over someone else? I think at the end of the day, if our, our goal for women is that when women arrive at positions of authority or power, that it is no longer, oh, unique. It's just expected. Because the qualifications are there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. It's more of that than, oh, it's a woman. Well, no, it's the best person. Mm-hmm. Exactly. For the for job. That. And that's the way I hired at WWE. I always hired the best person for the job. I wasn't out to find the first woman to do it. Mm-hmm. However, we had you know, the head of human resources was a woman. A chief marketing officer was a woman. A lead producer was a woman. And it happened because they absolutely were the best yes. people for the job. In this event, people can look at it as an investment. Mm. We absolutely. invest in so many things every day, but this is an investment in yourself. And women, so often, we take care of our families. We take care of everyone but ourselves. That's a challenge we have also. We'll spend money on everything else, mm. but we wait for ourselves last. And we have got to stop that because men have been investing in themselves for years. And look where it's gotten them. Pretty good. We're worth every penny, and we're only going to get better if we invest in ourselves. And when we come together as women... We do reassure one another. You'll see in this organization, it's all about women reassuring each other and help each of us to have growth and conquer any obstacles we ever thought we had. Where can you go in a place and say, hey, I've let all my inhibitions down. I've let all my walls down. I can finally just talk about what's inside me and what I want to give and how do I get it? I think women are afraid to ask how to get it. We always want to have someone to go with us. So Mm. let's say husband buys this gift for his wife. Mm. Well, the first thing she's going to think about is I don't know anybody there. We want women to know that from the moment they enter that door, they are going to be secure and feel good about themselves and think, my gosh, I wish I had done this earlier. So I think we want women to know whether you come by yourself or you come with a group of friends. We want you to know we're going to take care of you. You're going to feel supported. You're going to feel encouraged and you're not going to feel alone. Advice. You have a lot of advice to offer from Mm -hmm. all your experience, but starting out a piece of advice that your mama or your daddy gave Mm you that you still remember to this day? Well, I can tell you mine is that um, both my parents said, you know, don't be afraid to fail. Failure is what you learn from. You know, success you may remember more, but failure and mistakes stick with you forever. And you learn from them. And if you don't learn from them, then you have no business doing what you're doing anyway. It's go with your guts, be strong, listen to your instinct because they're good. And yes, you'll make mistakes. You'll fall down a few times, but every time you do and you get back up, you'll be stronger. So don't be afraid to take those risks. Don't be afraid to fail and just keep keep moving forward. Mine was um, do what you feel is in your heart. My parents were, especially my dad, I I have to say my dad had a major role in that, but never be afraid to go for what you want. I moved constantly growing up. I mean, I went to more schools than most people, a whole generation go to. I went to so many schools. So because of that, I always had to make new friends. I always had to have the confidence level that I'm not going to be here long, so I better make my friends, right? So I learned very early on how to develop relationships, and I think that's served me well through today. Because if I've been somewhere, I promise you I know somebody there. It could be someone who works in the kitchen. It could be someone who works on the floor. It doesn't matter, but I know someone because I love to meet people. But that was something that, that my 
father always instilled in me, never be afraid to go for it and always reach out to people who you come in contact with for two reasons. Number one, they might just need a smile or a hug. And secondly, you never know what you can learn from them. And I take that to heart today. And I learn from Linda and Stacy every day. Just like I'm sitting up really straight that you can't see this, people. when I'm sitting up straight in this chair because Linda sits up straight in hers. Be life learners. My parents are cattle ranchers, cattle buyers. All our whole life was my dad goes, you have to live a life with a heart of service. If you live a life with a heart of service, you'll be self-assured. You'll have a mind Set that it's not only a take world, it's also a giving world if you're open to that. I've always been really honored. I don't even call our customers on shopping channels all over the world. I call them girlfriends because they've given me a self-assurance and told me I could do anything I ever wanted to do, just like my parents did. And I've told them in turn, you can do anything you want to do. And I think when you have like-minded, like-hearted women that are of service like that and aren't competitive and that are giving people that the world's a much better place and our community is so much more powerful and speaking of powerful again prepare to share powerful, powerful. <laughs> that's right absolutely